friends and welcome to a, another episode of the Wardenburn Reads video series that I am doing. Um, hi, how have you been? I'm really hoping to try and get these videos on a more consistent schedule. It, probably not over the summer. Um, I have some big life things happening, but um, maybe this fall to really try and get it into the habit of doing like a quick video once a week, once every couple of weeks, just to talk about books and what I've been reading because I just, I love books so much. <laughs> and also I forgot to mention, I'm Emily, by the way, and a quick note, um, I've been dealing with some kind of like congestion, allergies, something or another, so my voice might be a little bit deep, <laughs> but hopefully it's not too noticeable, it's not too bad. So, Let's talk about some books. What have I been reading? As I mentioned in the last video, I have been really enjoying reading books in the Lord Peter Rimsey series by Dorothy L. Sayers, and I just flew through like three books. <laughs> okay, hopefully we're fine. The baby woke up. I had to go and try and settle him back into taking his nap, so fingers crossed he cooperates. <laughs> As I was saying, I have been reading the Lord Peter Rimsey series. Last time we spoke, I was reading The Unpleasantness at the Bologna Club. <laughs> Do you ever have it where you're reading a book and you just pronounce things in your head and then when you try to say it, you're like, I hope that's right? <laughs> so I read that one, then I read Strong Poison, The Five Red Herrings, Have His Carcass, and then there's a... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a short stories collection that's next. I'm watching the baby on the monitor. Stay asleep. <laughs> um, there's a short story collection that I read. I can't remember what that one's called. And then I'm waiting for the next book in the series, Murder Must Advertise, to be available so that I can read that one. So I've read, what was that, four or five books? <laughs> I thought it was only three. Um, so I read, I read all of those and I absolutely loved them. They're so, so good. The short story collection was a little bit meh because honestly there were only like two stories about Lord Peter Whimsey and the rest of them were either just random short stories by Dorothy L. Sayers or um, her other character, Montague Egg. And I didn't care for those stories as much. They were okay, they weren't bad, but they just were not what I was wanting. I wanted Lord Peter Whimsey, so. <laughs> um, but the rest of them were so, so good. Uh, let's see. So the first one, Bologna Club, that one was really good. It had a fantastic ending. Um, that one was about a um, two siblings, a brother and a sister that died on the same day and they're trying to figure out who died first because that impacts when the, how the money gets divvied up. And then the next one is um, when it introduces Harriet, who, um, if you're at all familiar with the Lord Peter Whimsey series. Harriet and um, Lord Peter, it's, it's classified as one of like the romances. And so they finally introduced her um, in Strong Poison where Harriet has been accused of poisoning her lover and Lord Peter Whimsey has to get her off. Um, and that one was really good. And then the Five Red Herrings, that one was a really fun one because it was, it basically, Lord Peter's trying to get over, um, or not get over, he's trying to ignore the fact that he's in love with Harriet. And so he's in Scotland and he's like trying to run around finding out who killed this painter who nobody liked and there's all of these people that are potential suspects and all that. So that one was really fun. And then the next one, um, Harriet is taking a vacation and she finds a guy that's been murdered and then she gets kind of involved in this case. So obviously Lord Peter shows up. And that book was so funny because the whole time there was like this banter from Lord Peter where he's like teasing her or whatever. And he, he keeps randomly like asking her to marry him. And it's just so funny and I absolutely loved it. It was so good. <laughs> so I read those and then um, 
like I said, I'm waiting for the next book in the series. So while I'm waiting for the next book in the series, um, I read another short story collection from the British Library Crime Classics. It was called The Long Arm of the Law, and it was all about like police officers um, in murder mysteries. Yeah, um, and that one was really good. It was really fun. Then I picked up some Patricia Boonforth books. I don't know if I've made it clear on this channel yet. I know that I have gushed about Patricia Wentworth in um, my on my knitting channel when I have a little book section of my knitting podcast. Um, I have gushed about Patricia Wentworth and she is just one of my all-time favorite authors. She has a whole series um, that's called the Miss Silver series and it's all about this retired governess turned private detective and she's this very classy older lady. She knits all the time and she's just very smart and just such an excellent character. I want to be Miss Silver when I get older. Like, that's my goal. Not necessarily to be a private detective, but the character of Miss Silver. <sighs> I love her so much. However, I found out sometime last year that Patricia Wentworth had also written a whole selection of other stories. Some of them were um, other murder mysteries, some of them were just kind of like thriller mysteries, and then I have also realized recently that she actually started writing romances that she then um, got more into writing crime fiction, which is amazing because one of my favorite parts about the Miss Silver series is that there, in every single book there's some sort of like slight romance love story that's woven throughout the book and it's just amazing. They're so sweet and wholesome and it's so good. So and then I realized that she also wrote romances. However, um, I couldn't really get my hands on the rest of her books. My library didn't have them um, and so and through the Libby app, which is the main place that I get books from the library, I get ebooks, um, didn't have any. It just had like the Miss Silver series. Um, and so then I bought one of them. I bought the... Is it The Mysterious Adventures of Jane Smith? I don't remember what it is. I'm pretty sure I've talked about it in a previous video on this channel, but I bought that one last year and read that one, and that one was really good. But um, I hadn't been able to get my hands on any of the other ones without actually going and purchasing all of the books. And they've been republished by... Is it Dean Street Publishing? Can't remember for sure, but they're kind of expensive. Um, they're paperback books, but they're all right around like $16, $17 a piece. Um, and even used, they're still quite expensive because they've only just been republished within the last like year or two or something. Um, so I was delighted when I realized that Hoopla, which is the app that I just started using in like April, um, also through my library, you ebooks through the library. The only thing with Hoopla is that you have a limited amount of books that you can check out each month. You can only do eight. Um, the baby might be waking up. This might be the most interrupted book video that ever existed. Anyway, um, Hoopla has a whole bunch of Patricia Wentworth's other books. So um, I read Let's see, I just finished reading, one, I was in my Lord Peter Whimsy thing, and then um, those weren't available, so I went around Patricia sure Wentworth's book, and then I read Outrageous Fortune, which is, um, was that what it was called? I'll, I'll have the covers up on the screen, so you'll, you'll, you'll know what it is, but that one, um, now I'm trying to remember what that one was about, because I've read, I read two in the last couple of days, and I'm on my third one. So I'm, I'm kind of like right in the middle of the third one and it's so good. Um, it's the one that I'm reading now is called like Nothing Ventured I think and it is about a um, this young girl or this girl lady that is married to this guy. She saved his life once when she was a little girl and now she is having to save his life again because he's been threatened multiple times and he doesn't believe her and there's a marriage of convenience and <sighs> so good. It's so good. Oh my goodness. Um, so that's the one that I'm reading right now so I'm trying to think about what the other ones were because I'm all about that one. Um, 
Let's see, what was the one that I just finished yesterday? <laughs> and my iPad's in the other room. Um, I'm using that to FaceTime between my iPad and my computer so I can keep an eye on the baby. Um, he's wiggling around. Um, let me see if I can jog my memory real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, I just have to remind myself of the um, the summary of the plot because I, I know the stories but I'm just into a new story. <laughs> so in Outrageous Fortune it's a story of a guy who has amnesia. He was involved in a shipwreck and all he can remember is something about these emeralds. Something about the emeralds that he's the only one that knows where they're at. So a woman shows up to pick him up. She claims to be his wife and he's like I don't remember you. Um, so she takes him, says that he's her husband because she hears him muttering something about the emeralds. So she says that he's her husband. And um, then there's also another young girl who is, I keep calling them young girls, like she's like 28 or something. <laughs> um, young lady who um, her cousin is missing and she begins to suspect that this man who was at the hospital who was taken away by this other lady or this other woman um might just be her cousin and so they have to figure it out because he might have murdered somebody and he might have been the one that stole the emeralds but he has amnesia he can't remember anything and um so that was outrageous fortune. It was it was so so good. And then the other one that I read was the amazing chance. And this one, oh, all of these are so good. Like this is the thing. I keep saying that they're so good. They're amazing. I love Patricia Wentworth's writing. Um, but the amazing chance is about this German who is Anton Bloom, and at least that's how I pronounced it. And he's kind of known as the village, like, idiot. He can't speak, he, or he doesn't speak, he seems to be very, like, not all there. Um, he got a wound when he was in the war and he hit his head and so he, he's kind of, um, got some mental issues. And, uh, so then he is helping a couple of English officers to drag this tree out of the way because he's a very, very strong, like, peasant man. And it's a, there's this big rainstorm and whatnot, so he gets whacked on the head again, and then he looks up at one of the English officers and calls him by his nickname that no German would possibly know, and, um, says something to him as if he knows this English officer and so the officer is just like what <laughs> um and so then he is taken back to he takes this German peasant for all he knows back to his house um and there's this whole thing that it turns out that this was actually a um, English soldier and there's uh, identity, they're trying to figure out exactly who he is and he's one of two brothers but he says that he can't remember which one it is and then one of the brothers was married. It's so good. <laughs> I just, I, I love all of these. They've been so, so good. The, um, the Amazing Chance didn't really have a murder. It was just kind of this mystery as far as who is this man, which person is he, and trying to figure it out. Then the um, Outrageous Fortune didn't really have a murder. There was a suspected murder. Somebody might have gotten murdered. Um, or there was an attempted murder. So there was a, a murder mystery aspect of it involved. And then um, the one that I'm reading now, oh goodness, I just said it, what is it? Nothing Venture? Um, that one has like attempted murder too. So some of these aren't necessarily your classic murder mystery story, but they're still very, very good. And I was talking with Mike and my husband um, about I realized one of the reasons why I very, very much enjoy Patricia Wentworth's writing is that instead of like a lot of books, particularly like modern day books or movies, like Hallmark movies, things like that sort of a thing, they, the whole plot is based off of something really stupid and like ridiculous, like um, a miscommunication. So you've got the guy and the girl and you know she sees him 
hugging some other lady and she gets affront affronted and then doesn't ask him for any explanation. She just breaks everything off and runs away and it's like this stupid miscommunication aspect. Like that's what the whole plot is built on. Patricia Wentworth on the other hand does a phenomenal job of for the most part there's no like little squabbles like that. Everybody acts with dignity and they're mature and responsible and they communicate with each other and most of the time it's outside forces that are trying to either separate the people, you know, like one person is accused of murder or is a murder suspect and the other person is is not and so then the one that is the murder suspect is saying, oh I can't be with you because that wouldn't be respectful to you because I'm a murder suspect. Like that sort of thing where it's outside forces that are um, pushing the plot forward rather than a silly miscommunication that could have been solved in two minutes. Um, so that's one of the reasons that I really, really love Patricia Wentworth is she just writes such a good story and they're also like really, I don't want to say intelligent stories, but they're, they're actual, like, you can see them actually happening sort of stories. So, highly, highly recommend. If you have not read the Miss Silver series and you like Golden Age Murder Mysteries, please go read the Golden, the Miss Silver series. They're so good. And especially if you are a knitter and you like to knit, it's so much fun because the whole Miss Silver series, she's talking about how she's like knitting all these things for her niece or her, um, her niece's children or she's thinking about like yarn and trying to find wool because they're all of the Miss Silver books are right around World War Two. They're like the 1930s to like the 1960s, like right in that sort of a time period. Um, so for most of them, I think they're earlier like 1930s, 1940s, 1950s um, and so there's a lot of like the the post-war rationing or during the war rationing um, and so it's really fun to see she talks about you know if she uses these coupons for this yarn and she can make this for her niece and it's, it's fun. So I could gush about Patricia Wentworth all day but I've got two more books that I really quickly wanted to share and then we're gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. So the first one, this was another one that I was kind of reading while I was reading the Lord Peter Rimsey series and then I finished it up once I was waiting for the next book and it is called Becoming Free Indeed by Ginger Duggar <sighs> Vulo Vulo <laughs> I don't really for 100% sure know how to pronounce her last name. Um, I come from a big family. I have nine siblings so there's ten kids and we often would get comments from people, my parents would get comments being like, oh, are you trying to keep up with the Duggars? If you're not familiar with the Duggars, they became really famous because they had a reality TV show on TLC called, um, well, it was originally like 14 Kids and Counting, but um, it's most well known as 19 Kids and Counting, and it was just this show about this very, very conservative um, homeschool family with a bunch of kids. And... Um, so I've, I've kind of known about them most of growing up because I also am a, from a conservative homeschool family. Not quite the same um, flavor, if you will, as the Duggars, but conservative homeschool family. Like there's always that kind of common ground. And then also there is the fact that I have a lot of siblings, I come from a big family, and so people would make those comments. Um, and there's been a lot of stuff that has come out about some of the Duggars' um, theology and the things that they believe and whatnot that is, honestly, a lot of it's really, really sad, um, but it's not necessarily great. So um, I was super, super happy. I've had this book on hold at my library for months. Um, I put it on hold before they actually had it. Let's wait for the school bus to go by. <laughs> I put it on hold before when it was still like on order at the library so they didn't have it yet um, and I wanted to read this because it's kind of from Ginger's perspective she talks about the ways that she was raised and the strange theology and whatnot that she was taught growing up versus what you know is actually true what the Bible actually says about God and I I really liked it. It was so good. She was so gracious and um, 
you know, she was not bitter. It was not like a revengeful sort of a book. It was just a very clear, like, these are some things that I was taught. These are some things that, these are the concerns or issues or problems that I have with these things that I was taught. And this is what I believe now. Um, and it was just, it was so nice. There were a lot of similarities in some of the things that I was taught growing up. Um, but, and like the place that she is now, well, uh, is pretty similar to the place that I am now religiously and whatnot um and so it was just really refreshing and nice to read it because I think the there is almost a push to be like everything that the Duggars did and said and whatnot is terrible and they're part of a cult and this horrible thing and that's not always true almost always there's some element of truth of fact of reality for what people believe and um so it was just it was nice that she didn't go about saying my parents were terrible and they taught me this and it was I had such a deprived and sheltered childhood um she was just very yeah like I said she was very gracious and I think that's the way that you have to be because honestly her parents were trying their best like that sort of thing or it's like I can look back at the mistakes that my parents made and I I can see like I know their heart their heart was to raise their children the best that they possibly could and every parent is going to make mistakes like it's just gonna happen I'm gonna make mistakes like it's just gonna happen and so I think that it's really important to just be able to remind yourself and see the heart of what your parents were trying to do and obviously I know that there are circumstances that are terrible, awful, horrible, bad, like just bad, wrong, evil circumstances and situations and I get that. Um, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about just your average standard parents. <laughs> that they are they are trying their best and it's nice that she didn't use this book as a way to just bash her family and bash her parents. It was more of a this is what I was taught. This is what I, th I think is wrong with it. This is what I believe now and I just really appreciated that and um it was a very good read. It's not a very big book, um, so it took me a bit longer because I have found that reading physical books takes me a lot longer these days um, because they're harder to pick up and put down than using like my iPad or my Kindle. Um, so it took me a little bit longer and also I was reading like a million other books at the same time. <laughs> But yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was, it was very good, very thought provoking. And it was, yeah. I recommend it. The other one is, I just, for accountability reasons, I'm not hardly far into this at all. I finally started Anne of the Island. I said in my last video I was going to start it that weekend and I actually just started it like yesterday. <laughs> so this is just like my accountability. I'm going to get through this book series this year. Like it's going to happen. Um, but I just started it. I think I'm like Oh, I'm about to start the fourth chapter. I was gonna say I think I'm two chapters in, but I'm three chapters in. So um, this is the third book in the series. Anne is heading off to college and um, we're gonna go from there. I will say Anne of Avonlea, the second one. So this is a little bit of a spoiler. If you have not read the series and you don't really want to hear any spoilers, maybe just, you know, go ahead and skip the rest of the video because I'm just going to talk about it for a little bit and then we're going to close things out. Um, so I'll see you next time. But for those of you that are fine with a little bit of spoilers or you've read the series, Miss Lavender, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I was brought up watching the original like Megan Fellows, Anne of Green Gables. Like that is the only Anne of Green Gables film version for me. All of the rest of my I person think are... I don't want to step on anybody's toes here, but I think they're terrible. Anyway, <laughs> so that is the only one that I really watch. I've heard a lot of stuff about Anne with an E and that they've modernized some things and, you know, made it silly. They've made it silly. Um, so I have not even watched it. I have zero interest in watching it. But in the original series, and honestly, it's only the first two in the series, the Anne of Green Gables, the continuing story... 
it's silly. But the first two, Anne of Green Gables and Anne of Avonlea, those two movies are amazing and I very much want to watch them. That is what I'm like kind of holding as the carrot on the stick for myself with this series is as soon as I finish the series then I'm gonna go and get those two movies and watch them. Um, I haven't watched them in years. <laughs> But in those series, they completely cut out Miss Lavender as a character, and oh my goodness. So in the, it's, it's kind of, she's one of Anne's kindred spirits, and Anne meets her, and she's this older lady, and it was this really sad situation that she hadn't married the guy that she was in love with, and then it's been years and years later, and he, he had gotten married and had a child, and then his wife died, and then um, the child, the little boy, was going to the school where Anne was teaching, and so then Anne connects the little boy with Miss Lavender, and then, of course, that brings the little boy's father, Miss Lavender, back in touch, and I was just so worried that it was going to be one of those silly things where it just ends as, like, the sad, depressing thing, where it's like, they've come back together, and then some silly quarrel happens, and then they are separated again, and it didn't! Oh my goodness, I could, I, I'm pretty sure I teared up when I was reading that last section, the last bit in Anna, of, yeah, Anna of Avonlea. They get married and it's like the sweetest little wedding and it's just so good and I loved it. So anyway that was not a very clear discussion of it but hopefully you get what I mean. <laughs> that being said that is all that I have for you today. Um, I am planning I'm gonna finish reading my Nothing Venture book because I'm about halfway through with it and I really want to see what happens. Um, and then I'm going to keep reading Anne of the Island, and then at some point my next Lord Peter Whimsey book is going to come in, and I'll read that. Um, yeah. So, I hope that you enjoyed this very chatty video. I'm pretty sure that we are over 30 minutes long for this, which is... I can't help it. I just love books. So, thank you so much for watching, and... Um, all the way through to the end. I hope, hope that you enjoyed it and I'm hoping to be back very soon with another one. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Bye!